Hey YouTube, what's going on? This is Dan. All right, today is uh, August 4th, so we're gonna take a walk around the food forest and let you guys look at the possibilities. You know, anyone could actually do what I've done, you know, creating a food forest in a suburban backyard from, I mean, the plain suburban lawn, like you see back here, or you see this look? It was just lawn completely. You know, that was all my backyard was just a complete lawn, and we transformed that into a thriving food forest that's producing tons of food. We have so many different root crops, we have so many different fruit trees, we have, you know, so much stuff, you know, and I'm excited to, it's a four year old food forest, you know, so, you know. When I think about four more years and all the food that it's going to be producing, you know, if it's producing this amount of food in four years, I'm like, what will it do in another four years? Like, probably double, triple, triple what we actually get in from it right now. Before we even start, look, out, look over the pasture over there. That's my neighbor's house. They have cows over there and they also have horses. All right, but yeah, all right, let's get into the video and we're gonna start with the cranberry hibiscus. All right, all right, enjoy the video, guys. Have here is uh, cranberry hibiscus. This cranberry hibiscus, the, the leaves are edible. You know, you get a few of these young, young leaves add to your salad, you know, so you could have this in your landscape, you know, to aesthetically look extremely good and it's edible at the same time so even if you have this in the front of your yard i have this in the front of my yard yeah and nobody knows it's edible they just think it's a you know an ornamental plant with beautiful leaves you know so that's that's pretty cool you know yeah and then up beside that which you're going to see of the close proximity uh, or everything is planted here in the food forest so i let plants just figure this out yeah yep. we have a guava here yeah this guava is from a bunch of seed i planted and this is the last one to fruit you know now it has a bunch of it actually just pick up fruit and brought it inside i'm going to be tasting that today yeah but this, uh, yeah, this is the first year this one this took exactly four years to, to actually fruit the trees on the other side those took two and a half years to, to actually start fruiting but you know i don't know why this one took so long you know but i don't know but it, it, it actually started fruiting now so that's extremely happy about that and right beside the guava guys we have cassava if you don't know what cassava is cassava is a root crop you know, super root crop that you could boil just like a potato and you could use it to make flour, you can make bread, cake, everything, you know. So if there ever is a wheat shortage, so I got my cassava. It grows extremely well in Florida. I think that could it probably could go from zone eight B right now to, to eleven. It is not fussy about soil type. You just put it in the ground, leave it. And that's it. You know, it's good, just gonna flourish. We have more cassava here. Let me kind of step back and give you a better view of the cassava here. Big, lush thing. Yeah. And right beside the cassava, you see everything is close, guys. We have a papaya. This papaya snapped during the storm. Let me show you guys. During the storm. Let me get this. Then it's from it broke off here and maybe it was blessing in disguise. Okay, look what happened. There was one stalk going up. Now there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You know, stuff came, branches came off the papaya. And all of them probably stopped producing food. Okay, and right beside that papaya, guys, we have the dragon fruit. Coming over the fence here, you know, and we had fruit here. It seemed like somebody came and picked the fruit off. It, like they came and just broke the fruit off right here. Yeah, not cool. Yeah. 
My bad for putting a camera back here, though. <laughs> uh, yeah, but right beside that, we have a, you know, hog thumb or suela. And right with, in the suela, guys, we use it as a trellis for the dragon food. And right beside the, the, that is a moringa, you know, which is intertwining right through everything is going together. You don't even know the difference, or listen. You see the moringa pod? Yeah. Let me show you the mer moringa, moringa trees right here. And this is the hog plum. And they're just growing side by side, both of them thriving and looking good. Nothing seems like, you know, I know people always say one tree take energy from the other. The both of these are looking amazing right here. Yep. Yep. So look how big the trees are. Let me just come on some shoes. Look how big the trees actually are. Alright. Let's walk on the, <coughs> on the other side. We have more more cassava here. Yeah. A little papaya popping up right here. We have more cranberry hibiscus, yeah, then more cassava, tons of cassava. You know, I have cassava growing here for almost years. Some of them I don't even harvest. Just leave it until I really need it, yeah. Yep, more cassava here again, yeah. And there's another sweller house from a different variety this. Then we have one of the best chop and drop, you know, you could ever add to your food forest is Mexican some sunflower. Yeah. Really good. Breaks on extremely fast. You know, alright, so this is outside. Oh look, we even have a little mulberry. Some mulberry cutting I put back here. You know, and now it's it's just growing. Yeah. <clears throat> These trees need, need no no care. And <clears throat> let me just tell you something about the cranberry hibiscus. Cranberry hibiscus is gonna flower maybe about like October, November, it drop its seed, reseed, you know, so you plant this one time, you know, and it does reseed and every year it comes back, you know, and spread itself all over the food forest. Yep, good chop and drop too. All right, let's, let's go inside. All right, so we're in, inside of the fence right now, and let me show you how everything is planted close again. Yeah, we have a papaya here. You know, this papaya is from Hawaii. Yeah. Yeah, I got the seeds from Hawaii and it finally decided to just start growing extremely good. Yeah, I'm really happy about that. Yep. And right beside the the papaya we have more cassava. And right beside the cassava guys is katuk. Yeah. So you so we have everything densely planted here and everything is look at this guys look at the size of the katok yeah look at the size of the cassava they like this both of them are, are probably what 14 feet in height yeah yep and then we have a, a aki tree right here yeah which is from seed and and that's also just thriving just totally and neglect i said yep and look this is the aki tree tree this is a guava tree both of them are growing you know no problem at all being beside each other full of fruits you know i get tons of fruits off of these every year you know so so i mean sometimes instead of you go online and start asking in forums and all this stuff sometimes try it for yourself let's try something out of the box you know because what works for somebody may not work for you and what works for you may not work for somebody else you know so you know if i was listening to everything people say online about you know about planting fruit trees close to each other i probably would not have a food bar so i would probably have two trees here in the backyard yeah everything is thriving and go uh, mm. oh, right but no it's not right yet oh, so i'll leave that yep and look, this is a guava tree right here, guys. Now, maybe three, four feet from the guava is, look at the size of that trunk. That is a cutting from a hog plum. 
you know, three years there, and that's the size. It was a twig like this, and after three years, this is what it is right now. And the both of them produce tons of fruit. Yep. And let's turn around here. Then we have more. This is a different variety, a cassava. Yeah. Looking good. Then we have the purple forest guava. You know, look, we have Roselle, Jamaican sauce, coconut palm here. That grows very slow. Yeah. Yep. And then over here we have the the oxum again over here. Now the tree that was planted from a tiny cutting. Look at the size of it right now. Yep. Yeah. And then we have our Mexican sunflower, perfect chop and drop. You know, so what I come, I come and just chop the top off, use it and spread it around, you know, near other plants. You know, then we have another, we have another, what's the name here? Uh, papaya, yeah. That broke from the storm and that, that recently started growing. We have chaya. Mexican, yeah, chaya, yeah, sweet spinach. And then, guys, look at my citrus. What I find with this is citrus is from seed. And look how beautiful the leaves are, guys. Remember, this is Florida where we have problem growing citrus. And I notice I have the tree, I've grown this citrus in like densely with other trees. And it seems because it's in the dense, look, I'll show you how, how dense it is. There's one tree here, there's a cotip here, there's a herb here, lipia alba over here, and the citrus is right here. Look how beautiful the leaves are. There's something on my hand, like a spider or something. Yeah. So guys, how beautiful the leaves are. So I don't know what kind of citrus is. This was from seed, you know, and when it was growing all by itself, it, was, it looked yellow and all that stuff. No, look at the leaves wow yeah so this is another experiment i plant the citrus it dents with other trees and it seems like it, it's enjoying that environment so it's just always a trying different stuff this is a world's best mulberry from cuttings over from that we have a sugar apple you know i grew from seed a green sugar apple we have fruits here. I think we have like five fruits on it right now. Let me step around here. We have fruits down here. Uh, let's see if you can see. Yeah, fruits here. We got fruits right here. Yeah. Yeah, and right beside that. Let's walk over there. Okay. So, we have more. We have a... A, a sour sap over in this corner here. So what I do is this. I come and just break off the, the Mexican sunflower. Drop it right on the side. But, you know, every, all the plants are supporting each other. Yeah. Right. The kids are walking around. <laughs> I think the others are probably over there. Other, somewhere over there. Okay, all right, let's 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 continue the tour. There you go. Okay, so... The, yeah, this is the, the katuk over here. I know I haven't really mentioned what katuk is. All right, katuk is a perennial leafy green that you could use the, the young leaves and you add that to a salad have a very nutty you know m mild flavor i really like adding this to salad so when we, we do have the traditional leafy green this time of the summer because of the heat some of us can get a bunch of katuk you know cranberry hibiscus you know, you know longevity spinach we have a bunch of perennials here as well. I'll show you them as we walk through. Yeah, so let's 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 back off here. Come on, this side.
Okay. So the sugar athletes right here. Yeah. Healthy sugar athletes. Are. All right. We have this is a sapodilla from seed also. You know, 90% of the trees that grow here in, a, in the food forest is from seed. Yeah. And most of them are actually fruiting. All right. Let's, let's walk up and start. We have a mango. This is a, let's see. What is this? Oh, God. This is a fear, a fear child mango. And right beside the fear child mango, we have more cranberry hibiscus. And then we have another. I think that's a purple hog plum. Yeah. And then we have more cassava. Cassava is planted in between all the fruit trees. Every spot I get, I, I tuck cassava in between. And then there's a newly planted sugar apple here. Where, you know, I had a couple sugar seedlings. I um, was like, you know what? Let me put them in the ground. So I've been putting them in different parts of the, the food forest. Oh, you come to check out what's going on? Hey, chick, chick. What's going on? Yeah, and then we have more cranberry hibiscus here. This is a white cranberry hibiscus. And this is the first year I'm growing it. You know, if you see the difference here. Yeah, so it look exactly like the, the red, the, the calluses. Same thing, but it's just white. Yeah, so I have, uh, I think, two or three plants that I planted this this time. What's going on? What's going on, girls? What are you do checking out what, what you could eat? So they go around and just scratch in the morning and yeah, eat the bugs and all that stuff. <laughs> kind of cool. Yeah, so then on, on this side, we have more cranberry hibiscus. Yeah, we have a mulberry. That's not looking too good. I don't know, they probably the extreme heat. And then we right and this is our guava. The guavas this year guys are so sweet, like sugary sweet. Um, like one year it's more it's not that sweet, but this year it's like so sweet. I'm wondering if because of the drought and not much rain, and I think that's what contributes to it too. But they're like so sweet. I look forward to coming with you every morning and get, you know, six, seven of them and cut them up in a bowl for my breakfast. Yep. All right, we have a papaya on this side, you know, with chaya. The chaya is growing real tall. I probably need to come. I come and trim up the chaya from time to time. Yeah. Right here. And right. From the papaya, you know, we have this is a mm, what's this again? It's peanut butter fruit. It's a peanut butter fruit from seed as well. Yeah, and I realize the peanut butter fruit like more. It like that rain. Whenever the rain, if you have a lot of rainfall, put on a lot of growth. You know, if I tried it, if I water it with a tap water, you know, it, it nothing. The leaves just look real bad and stuff. So it's like the peanut butter fruit come like it depend on rain water, you know, that makes a difference for the peanut butter fruit. All right. Over here we have cocoa or taro growing on this side. Then we have a torch ginger. Yeah, hey, Eric, this is the torch ginger, what it's looking like right here. It's put on a lot of growth this year. Last year, the growth was, you know, small, not much growth. All right, then right beside the torch ginger, we have two plantains. That seems to grow so slow. And this, I don't know, you know, I add a lot of compost, but it just grow, grows so slow. But I'm going to be very patient with these plantains. Yeah, yeah. 
Yep. All right. Walk on on this side. Yeah, I'm going from side to side because there's another white roselle here, Jamaican sorrow. This is a white variety. Yeah. And then we have, look, look right here, guys. This is cassava. This is a Togo variety, you know, very good variety, you know, uh, cassava. And once the rain, we get the rain at the same time, that it just takes off growing. This is used right now, about like nine feet in height. Yeah. So, yep. And then a couple more cassava. But cassava is just packing this corner right here. We have our, these are all, you know, zinnias. And you know, we have the, the, the flowers is a must in the food forest. Yep. Then, yeah, and I let a lot of them reseed and some of them are broadcast seed all over. You know, so we have zinnias all over. Then we, on this side, we have the curry leaf plant, you know, which you could, it's good to add. This is a primary you know leaf that they use in asian or uh, indian cuisine you know they add this to everything soup all kinds of, i have a couple of these trees what i do with it i cut the young leaves and i just add it when i'm cooking rice or soup really good yeah you know, just give give it that unique indian flavor you know in, in your food you know so right on here we have a Malika mango, which started to put on a lot of growth this year, which is cool, you know. And over here you now we have more cranberry hibiscus, yeah. And and then we come over here, we have a, not a mango here. This is a pickering mango here, and a more taro. Yeah, it's a different variety Tara this is this Tara actually I went to the Latin market you know and just pick up a you know a few Tara you know and came and plant them home you know it was like five dollars and you get like four a four nice size Tara root so when I put them in the ground this is it guys <laughs> yeah, so and then we have okra right here so I have like four okra plant together here so We've been getting, you know, five to six okra every three, three to five days, something like that. Yeah. Then we have a, another sugar apple here, which a different variety of this. Yeah, so I'm excited for all these sugar apples. These sugar apple trees that I show you guys are all young trees, two year old trees that's been fruiting, you know, so, you know, I'm happy about that as well. You know, then we have our Kerry mango one of my favorite mango so far you know you just need to get the carry mango at the right time eat it at the right time and it's it, to me it's no different than a julie yeah and i eat plenty julie you know in my lifetime but you just need to get the carry at the right time a really good mango and we have more cranberry hibiscus or cranberry hibiscus right here more cassava nice big papaya here yeah yep and we come on here we have a lot of herbs we have herbs growing this this is lipia alba yeah and beside lipia alba we have longevity spinach which is a perennial spinach yeah and then when we turn from here let's let's walk back up on this side <laughs> 